Oswald, Beal, and Gortat. Porter can't find anybody. He gives it to Wall. Working gets Bradley for three. John Wall! Et salut la Wizard Nation, on se retrouve aujourd'hui pour la toute première vidéo de la chaîne. Je me présente, Quentin, l'un des CM de Wizards France et on est quasiment au complet, euh, le patron n'a pas pu venir. Euh, je, vais vous, je vais laisser mes, mes, mes coéquipiers se présenter. Ben moi c'est Alexis, euh, CM depuis euh, trois ans maintenant. Euh, puis bah, je vais laisser tout simplement la parole à Luca qui va, qui va très vite se présenter aussi. Salut tout le monde, moi c'est Luca, CM pour Wizards France depuis un an, je suis un petit peu le rookie et très content d'être là. Ok, impeccable. Alors, comme vous le voyez, nous ne sommes pas seuls, euh, nous avons l'immense, l'immense, l'immense honneur d'accueillir avec nous pour une interview exclusive Dave Johnson. Euh, ah, donc à partir de maintenant, nous allons parler en anglais pour pouvoir réaliser l'interview avec Dave Johnson. Um, Dave, uh, first of all, could you please uh, introduce yourself? Well, my name is Dave Johnson. For 25 years, I, I've been the radio voice of, of the Washington Wizards, and and I I'm just so thrilled to connect with you because I love the passion uh, that true supporters have. Uh, in our in our basketball team, and and so I appreciate this time with all of you with with, with Belgium, home of the Red Devils. They, they call them the the national soccer team, the Red Devils in Belgium. We've got we've got France. It it is a global game, and and I cannot thank you enough for for asking me to spend some time with you. Thank you, thank you so much, Dave. First question: um, we, we have done some research on you and your job. And we have seen that you are known uh, at the moment for two main reasons. First, yes, you are the, the current director and morning sports anchor for WTOP FM in Washington. Uh, secondly, uh, you also are the radio play-by-play -play voice of the Wizard. What what does this second one consist of? I mean, were you the man shooting, for example? John Wall, when there was a baguette. Well, it's, it's, and you, it's, I describe um, the radio, the Wizards basketball games uh, on the radio. So uh, I, I'm not the public address announcer that might be saying John Wall, as you, you talked about. So people will hear me on radio and, and sometimes uh, television as, as well, as you described. I, I do the morning. Uh, sports on WTOP in Washington. I'm also a television sports anchor. I, you know, I put on a tie for that uh, when I'm when I'm doing the television. I also do the broadcast for our local football, as you call it, but soccer team, uh, DC United uh, in Major League Soccer. Who we've had a you know some guy named Thierry Henry played in Major League Soccer. So we've had we've had some uh, uh, French guys come over and, and enjoy some time here in Major League Soccer, but. I grew up in my childhood as a fan of, of the Washington Bullets. They were called the Bullets then. So it, it, is, it is an amazing a, a dream come true for me to be able to, for the last 25 years, to, to witness every Wizards basketball game, the, the highs, and we've had some highs, and yes, disappointments. But, but that's, that's what it's... It's all about you. You have your moments of joy, and moments uh, of, uh, of of dis disappointment. But we share them together, and that's what uh, makes. As I see, you have Wizards gear on. That's what makes supporting a team so important. There we go. Yeah. Um, I think, Dave. What is the best moment you remember having during an interview as sportscaster or anything in relation with your job? What is the best moment? The best moment. I mean, there have been. Wow, that, that's a that's a tough question. There's been a lot of moments of 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 when I've described moments uh, with the Washington Wizards. I, I think about you know game winning shots, uh, whether it was a Gilbert Arenas in the playoffs against Chicago, certainly most recently John Wall uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals in in 2017 in, in that incredible shot or you know, a Bradley Beal game winner, but it's also, um, 
I think back, uh, we, I, I'm in a wonderful position where I get to, to interview people in so many ways. I, I think about um, interviewing our, our franchise legend, and I became close friends with him, uh, Wes Unseld, who was one of the 50 best basketball players of all time when, when the NBA had its 50th anniversary. And, and uh, you know, as he just um, talked about uh, the importance of education, establishing a school with his wife, uh, Connie, uh, north of Washington in, in Baltimore. So um, I, I think as I look back, there's been so many interviews with, with um, so many people. I think about, you know, when Eddie Jordan was named head coach of the franchise and, and, and how emotional he was because he grew up in Washington, D.C., and now he was, he was the, uh, the coach of the team. So, um, you know, it, it's been a lot of years, a lot of interviews, and, and, uh, but, but that's what everything is all about is, is connections, and, they're, and they're, each one is special uh, in each way, just like this uh, get-together with you guys is special. Okay. And what could we wish you for the next five years, Dave? The next five years? Yes. Wow. Uh, well, I, th I think, first of all, let's, let's wish for good health for everyone around the world and, and that, that we get through this um, pandemic together because it has certainly challenged us uh, in, in ways I, I can't even begin to express. So I think, you know, th that's first and foremost. I, I think, um, I, you know, five years, it's, it's uh, I, I want to continue to see the Wizards franchise develop young players and eventually win a title. And I say, we, we drafted from Israel, Denny Avdia, and he's just beginning his journey. Rui Hachimura, who, who you saw last year. We have an incredible superstar in Bradley Beal who wants to wear that Wizards jersey. So I, I should have worn my Wizards jersey, but he wants to be in D.C., and, and he is such a leader. So I, I want to, it, it, as I try to describe it on the radio, and, and maybe you can appreciate this, is, is that, yeah, we'd like to win some more games, and that's the goal. But I've been doing this a long time. This is a team that plays hard and is just filled with, with, with joy and, 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 and commitment. And all you need to know about that is the way they responded as we talked the last game they played in beating the Phoenix Suns 128-107. It's, it's successful teams have a certain – vibe and there's probably a french word that's better than vibe but that's that's the american word is yeah. vibe and and this group has a a good spirit a good vibe and i want to see that continue to to translate into a, a team that contends uh, for a title and and sitting here right now uh i believe that's possible and people can say well wait a minute how can you say that but uh, again there's no overnight success but i do believe Excuse me, I do believe we're on the right, right course of path, course of action. Well, well Dave, uh, excuse me. Dave, Dave, you, you have talked um, about about uh, title in the next five years. Do do you really think it's kind of possible in the next five years? Well, that, that's impossible to predict whether they'll actually win a title within in, in the next five years. But do I think they can become a contender within the next five years? Yeah, I absolutely believe that. Um, uh, now, what we'll, we'll add to the challenge of that is, is a team does not get better by, it, by itself. Other teams in the NBA strengthen themselves. We just witnessed this, this week with, uh, with James Harden now going uh, to the Brooklyn Nets. So it's, it's a very competitive league and, and the nature – Uh, of the of the sport uh, means that you do really need to have a a, a, a big three, if you will, out there. And, and certainly, we, we've got Bradley Beal's established. Russell Westbrook, when he is healthy, uh, he is a future Hall of Famer. So, yeah, and and granted, I understand he's 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 a he's a veteran and and more toward the end of his career, but his career is is not over. So that's why I say I think we're going in the right direction. Uh, you you can't necessarily snap your fingers and say, aha, 
uh, you know, right away we're, we're a contender uh, or we're not in that position to do that, but we're in a position that Magic, my name is Dave Johnson, but a guy named Magic Johnson, who is, who is much smarter than me uh, at basketball, believe that the Wizards will now turn themselves, uh, the, the acquisition of Russell Westbrook makes us a, a threat this year uh, in, the, in the playoffs. So I, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take Magic Johnson's word. Thank you, Dave. Um, Dave, I will not surprise you um, if I say that we are living a very special season uh, because of the sanitary crisis. We already had uh, many games postponed and some players, um, especially in the Wizards locker room, um, tested positive to COVID-19. I know that there is no good answers, but um, what do you think the NBA is going to do uh, to figure it out? And maybe what the NBA should do um, as much as possible, of course. I think that you know the NBA has led the way in, in so many ways if you if you remember it was the first league to shut down back uh in march and and the commissioner adam silver realized need to shut down not necessarily because he he was not panicking but he thought all right we need to shut down and figure out what we're dealing with here and how we can best deal with it as you all know in the summer they played in a bubble we call it a bubble. It was in Orlando. All the games were in one place. And it was very, very successful. Zero positive COVID tests once they got going because they were able to restrict everything. You can't have that situation forever. We, we, we all have to do, and I don't know what it's like in France or, or Belgium, but we all are going to the grocery store, or we need to buy food, or, or we're, not in an, an enclo- we're not in a bubble, we're not in an enclosed space. We have to interact, but we have to do it um, as safely as possible. So I think right now with, with the NBA, when they made its schedule, and I think this is important to know. Yes. When they Dave, made it- yes, sorry. Uh, you, you're talking about the, the bubble. Um, I'm not sure if it's Tommy Shepard, um, Scott Brooks, who talked about that yesterday, but I guess it's Tommy Shepard who said uh, no, the players don't want to have, um, uh, again, a bubble. Yes, it was very successful, but for the players, it was maybe a little bit too restrictive for us. Well, no, what, what I was saying was you can't do a bubble again, not because it's it's too restrictive. It's just that that is not the way to move forward. The way to move forward, what I was about to say was, is the NBA plan for the fact that there might have to be postponed games. And there are. And, and that's why only 36 games of the schedule was released. So they would have time to make up games that they had to postpone. So what the NBA should do is, is what they're doing. Continue to, if they need to, make it make it. Uh, you know, monitor the health and safety of the players. And if they have to change procedures to, to make it even more safer, they will do so. And that's exactly what they've done. But you have to understand when you, when they play games in arenas now, it is already very well thought out. There's a 25 page document that explains how you go. I had that I had to read that explains how you go to arena when I go into the arena, I have to park in a certain place. I have to walk around the entire building. I have to go through a certain entrance, and I have to stay in a certain area. So the, the short answer to your question is the, the NBA is, is doing everything it can to make sure people stay safe. And the reality is most games are going on. But the reality is we are going to have positive COVID test because there's not been a cure for COVID. It's out there and we just have to, to deal with it and we have to try to continue uh, to do the best we can while doing our jobs, whatever it may be. More precisely about the Wizards, um, the season began with three wins uh, in 11 games. At the moment uh, we are talking, it's one of the worst results in the league. We have lost uh, Thomas Bryan for the entire season. 
uh, Russell Westbrook uh, is currently struggling uh, with his quadriceps. Um, the landscape seems a bit uh, scary, uh, isn't it? Well, if, if it was a 20-game season, it'd be very scary. But it's a 72-game season. And you have to keep in mind, seven of those eight losses within the last five minutes, they, it was a five-point game. Now, you don't get credit for that. It still counts as a loss. But the point being is, is you can see the potential of this team coming together, but it's a lot of different parts that have, that have come together. And it is more difficult because we don't have the practices we typically do, would do because of COVID. We don't have the, the training camp because of that typically happens. And that's all teams. So it's not just the Wizards. Everyone's dealing with that kind of struggle to make a transition. I think would, it, it, it would be scary if it was a, a short 20-game season or a 30-game season. They clearly have time to, to, to get it right and, and, uh, and win more games than not. It was a, a big blow losing Thomas Bryant, and that's um, <laughs> always going to be the challenge for every team, that, that when you go into a season, you hope for good health. Losing our starting center is not a good thing. But I've also seen how teams can respond and, and still have success. And I think while it would have been nice to play this week after that Phoenix Suns game, that was an indicator that this team has the talent to try to figure out how to move forward in the absence of, of Thomas Bryant and, and still have success. Uh, and again, I'll think about, uh, I'll go back to, to 2007, 2008. Gilbert Arenas was, was the star player on the team, but he didn't play because of injury. And they still made the playoffs. So you have to adjust, you have to adapt, but, but this team has, has the, uh, the talent to do so. Yeah, um, you, you have talked about, uh, about um, Thomas Bryant's injury and uh, the fact that uh, the Wizards played very, very, very well uh, against the Phoenix Suns. Do you think in, um, in a kind of any way, um, the, this injury can um, help the, the team become a, a, real, a real team. I mean, uh, because of uh, Thomas Bryant injured, is uh, very, very appreciated in the locker room, I guess. Maybe the, the teammates are now um, uh, aimed to a new objective, you know, what I'm, uh, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. No, I, I think, I mean, sometimes because of adversity, it, it does make you stronger and it forces you to become stronger. And that's what happens on good teams and, and or teams that, that want uh, to be better. So I, I know exactly what, what you're, you're saying that uh, when, when, the attitude of the team was not get the head down and, and feel sorry for themselves because look, Thomas Bryant, Thomas Bryant was playing at an all-star level. I'm not saying he was going to be an all-star, but if you look at the games before the injury, he was playing like that. So it, it, it was a massive um, blow to, for, for him personally and for the team. But how do you respond well, then in the locker room, you have to say, all right, we'll show you. And it's going to have to be, there's not one player that is going to relate, replace Thomas Bryant. And we saw that in the first game. You know, a veteran in, in Robin Lopez starts. But then a guy, Mo Wagner, who is not getting much playing time, all of a sudden now is going to get playing time. And you could see it. He's saying, all right, I'm, I'm getting playing time. This is my opportunity. I'm going to show you uh, what I can do and what I can add. And keep in mind, the Wizards have plenty of scores. They need a person in that position to rebound, to, to, to play defense. And that's certainly something that both Mo Wagner and Robin Lopez can do. Yeah, great. Yeah, great answer. Um, now let, let's talk about another player of the Washington Wizards. Um, 35 points per game, five rebounds per game, five assists per game with 
great percentages and a franchise high for a few days ago with 60 points on arguably the best defense of the NBA. I'm pretty sure I don't have to say his name, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, Bradley Bill is having an all-time beginning of the season. T tell us more about, about him, about Honda. A special, special person and a special player, but a special person. And, and I've been so blessed. I remember when, when he came into this league. Um, and, and by the way, that first season when he came into the league, John Wall at the time was injured. So now he comes into a league. He was expecting to play with John Wall, but John Wall was, was, was hurt. And, and so now he's trying to figure it out. What we, have, what we are now witnessing is a guy that continues – to go to a higher level, even though last year, uh, we're talking 30 points a game, career high in assisting, and I'm thinking, how does he go to even another level? And I'm watching, and again, last year, which he should have been an all-star, he was double, triple teamed, uh, and, and was still produced those numbers. This year, he is, he's not saying, and he said this before the season. He said, I'm not going to try to average 30 points a game, but if it happens, it happens. And that's, that's the key. It's happening because it's in the flow of the games. He's not just throwing up shots, throwing up shots and trying to, to, to get personal stats. Uh, he's all about wins. He's all about uh, the team. He's all about – uh, again, you, you can't, I can't say enough about the quality of, of the person, Bradley Beal. And I think because of that quality, there's that commitment that has led to what we are seeing now. A true, we love to say in, in the United States, superstar. Superstar is, is our big, well, he's, he's truly um, become a superstar. And, and uh, you, he, but he is, again, a, he's a special person. He, he's a person you can have a conversation with about so many things other uh, than basketball. He takes a genuine interest in each person that, that he, he has conversations with. He, he's is, as big as he is, he's not uh, above people. When you have the one-on-one -on -one interaction with him, uh, you really are having a one-on-one -on -one interaction with him. So, and I think that, that rubs off on the young players that come in and they're able to have that connection with, with a player of Bradley Beal's quality, and that helps uh, them improve their game as well. But, but I've, I've been nothing short uh, of, of astonished just 11 games into the season that he is, he's continues to, to rise. And, and that, that's a very exciting prospect for the Wizards and a, and a scary thing for the rest of the NBA. Yeah, you're right. And you already have uh, responded to my next question, but what, what's the ceiling for him as a player? When, when it's about scoring buckets, Bradley is one of the best players in the world. It's hard to become even stronger on this way. Here, uh, uh, we think he has made a great upgrade on the defensive side this season. Do you agree with us? Yeah, absolutely. And that's actually, I, I should have mentioned that. That's where also we're seeing, and that's something he talked about, um, that, that he needed to be um, a, a better defender. And that, that's another part of his, um, his personality is you, you appreciate players that accept responsibility and accountability. And he will tell you about last season where there's areas on, on defense, on ball defending, uh, he should have been better. This year, he has been better. It's one thing to, to talk about being better. It's another thing, and it's a harder thing to actually do it uh, on the court. So I, I think we're, we're, the defense is where you might see the greatest growth from, from Bradley Beal as he, he truly becomes – um, an all-around player that, and it is an all-around player that uh, is, is quite simply put, one of the best, one of the best in the NBA. So it, it's the question about what the ceiling is that 
that's a hard one because he keeps breaking through that ceiling. Uh, but that's also, um, I, again, I've been around players like this who, who, who appreciate each game and each moment and don't take it for granted. And he is, he is one of those uh, players. And, and I think because of that, there's no telling what is next for Bradley Beal. We had a, a player on our franchise, Antoine Jameson, who I'm sure you, you know about, and, and yeah, yeah. Um, you know, had great success. But we were having a year where we weren't going to make the playoffs. And he kept getting his, his thumb hurt and all kinds of injuries. And I remember saying, but he would never sit down. And I remember saying to him, I said, you know, we're not going to make the playoffs. Why, why don't you just take some time off? And he said to me, he said, because I never want to look back when I retire and say, I didn't try and give it my all because he knew uh, an NBA career of 10 or 15 years in the, in the grand scheme of things is not that long. There's a whole nother life that you're going to have to live. And you don't want to look back and say, ah, I wish I could have done this. So that's, that's the way Bradley Beal is, is approaching his wizards career. Uh, I'm not going to, look back and say, I didn't give him my all. I'm just going to keep giving it my all and see what happens. Right. Yes. Um, you know, Bradley Bill is 27 years old and is one of the best players in the league at the moment. Um, beginning is prime, is prime, but the Wizards are not good as they were supposed. In NBA, uh, Would like to have, uh... ah, bon. Luca, Luca. Tu peux... on a des problèmes de connexion. Est-ce que tu peux reprendre yes. la question? Peut-être ça va mieux. Well, I'm going to ask the question. Um, I think I know where he's going with that, but go ahead. Um, well, uh, Brad is 27 years old. He's one of the 15, maybe 10 uh, best players in the league at the moment. Uh, his beginning is prime. But... Um, Currently, the Wizards are not as good as they were supposed to be. We know that 29 franchises in the NBA would like to have Bradley Bill uh, in their team. Um, again, do you think it's, go it's going to become uh, a little bit difficult to keep Brad uh, at DC if the wins are not coming soon, even if he loves the franchise and the city? Well, I, I think that... that um... The, the answer to that is, is that, yes, you, you, you know, players like Bradley Beal, just for all the reasons I described, want to win. They want to win. But also, I think you have to keep in mind, he signed a contract extension before last season. And that was his way of saying, I'm committed to this, to this team. And now, yes, it is up to the team to show they're committed to drafting well, which they have, Rui Hachimura, Denny Avdia. Um, bringing in players that can, that can help, like a Russell a Westbrook, and you have to continue to show the commitment to get better because he, Bradley Beal, has shown a commitment to you. And so I, I think it was just another reason why you appreciate uh, Bradley Beal because it'd be so easy for any, any of us in our jobs, if it's difficult to say, I want to go over there. I want to go over there where, where it's easier. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. He signed a contract extension and said, you know what? I'm a leader. I'm going to be a part of turning this franchise around. So, um, but yeah, there's, there's real pressure to do so. And, and so I, I, we don't judge this season or, or the franchise's direction based on um, 11 games, uh, it, it'll certainly be a conversation we'll continue uh, to have. But the only way that, that you get better and improve is, is saying, all right, you know, I want to be a part of the, the solution. And Bradley Beal has said he wants to be a part of the solution for the Washington Wizards and, and a very important part of the solution now. It's about getting it done. But that's, this is a results business. You know, we can talk about love and passion and, and all those kinds of things, but it will come down to wins and losses. But, but I also think 
Um, and, and I've been doing this long enough to know, and you guys too, I mean, you, you live sports. You, 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 I mean, no, no greater example of passion and interest in, in sports and the fact that you're taking your time to do the Wizards France podcast. Or, or, and, and so, you know, I've been on teams or called teams that got off to good starts. Guess what? It didn't end well. So you, you don't judge based on how it starts. It, it's how the season finishes. Um, but there is, a, there is a window where this team has to start to make it happen uh, in a right direction. It would be great to be able to say, aha, we're, we're eight and three, and all things are great. Um, but the reality is even if we were – the Wizards eight and three. It wouldn't mean uh, the challenge was was over, or or uh, there wouldn't be big challenges ahead. Just like there's certainly challenges ahead now uh, at at three and eight. So the answer to the question, Bradley Beal has made a commitment to this team, and yeah, it is up to this team to continue to show a commitment to deliver what Bradley Beal wants and what every Wizards fan fan wants in Belgium, France, or Maryland, D.C a winning team and back in the playoffs. Um, right. Yeah, and a few weeks ago, um, we had a heartbreaking moment when uh, John Wall got traded against uh, Russell Westbrook. Um, I'm not talking about the players. Both are great players, you know. Um, I'm talking about the human aspects, the way uh, John was into our lives. Um, what does you represent for the city of Washington and the entire city, not only the basketball fans? Well, I think, yeah, because John was so active, so active. Um, I, I think about this past summer, I, I was uh, helping him promote a, a uh, initiative that, that as we dealt with this pandemic or dealing with this pandemic to help pay people's rent uh, in, 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 a, in a city portion of the city. So um, the, the, John meant a lot and still does to the people of Washington. It's not just that he gets traded and we, we forget about him and I think he'll still be um, committed and is to so many things. The important thing is also that, that, our, that our Russell Westbrook has, has said uh, over and over again about his commitment uh, to, to using his platform to make things better for so many people. And, and it's more than just talk. He wasn't in town more than a week uh, when he was already involved in, in, in charity initiatives. So I'm not even sure if his bags were unpacked yet, yet he was already trying to make a difference. So, um, but John delivered us so many great memories as a franchise and the perfect script would have been good health and to continue to progress. As we talk here in 2021, 2017 was not that long ago when he, when he made that, great shot and you're thinking, aha, we're, we're right there. And then unfortunately, uh, really his inability to stay healthy, you know, slowed the progress of, the, of this franchise because for all the, the ways we talk and discuss and whatever, we do need key players to stay healthy. Every team does. Um, jersey to the roof, in your opinion? I'm, so, I'm sorry? Uh, jersey to the roof, in your opinion. Wow, that's a that's a good question. Um, that that's a real good question because um, you know I, I think about who has the jersey, you know, at the roof now, and and their players that that um, in some cases play their entire season with uh, careers with with Washington. But um, I, I think when when all is said and done. And, and, and again, it'll be at the end of his career and, and we, we see where the journey uh, takes us. But um, you could argue for doing that because he was a number one overall pick who came in and helped change uh, the course of this franchise uh, in, in a positive way. And so, you know, I think about you know, Earl Monroe is, is one of the, the numbers that are, that are in the rafters. And, you know, he didn't play his whole uh, career in Washington. So 
you know, that's a good question. I think it's, it's one that'll, that'll be answered, um, you know, after we win the NBA title, maybe in, in a few years when you can say, uh, well, back in 2010, that's when it all turned around. And even though John's not part of that team that, that wins the title, uh, he was part of a, a, of a change in direction for the franchise that was, that was helpful. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, Dave, I, I think, well, I guess you have to stay neutral in your job and we totally accept that. But us, as a fan account on Twitter, we don't have two, so we're giving you our opinion on Scott Brooks. We think it's going to become a little bit hard for Scott Brooks to keep his job. I mean, the Wizards is one of the worst defense in the league since too much time. Uh, right now, the, the results are quite bad. Well, thank you, Scott, for what you did in the organization, for developing young players and give confidence to them. But I think it's time to go. W would you be able to react to this, uh, Dave? Uh, my response, and, and this is all honesty, and this is in knowing the dynamic of, of the, the, the team. I think the time to change uh, coaches is when you can sense in the locker room the, yeah. the players are no longer uh, listening or, or with, uh, with the coach. And that's, that's not the case with the Washington Wizards. Uh, because sometimes when you, when you make a change at coach, uh, because of fans' true passion uh, for a team, and when a team has a losing record, you, you say, aha, well, we, we've got to change coaches. And, and you know what you will see sometimes when coaches are changed? You'll see oh, it, it changes for a couple, three games, but it doesn't it's, – it's more like – we say in America it's like a sugar pill. It, it makes you – It makes you feel good uh, for the moment because you're unhappy as a fan, as as a friend, and 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 those are natural feelings. Don't get me wrong; I'm I'm, I'm accepting of those feelings, and and I and we have a post game call in show, and and we talk to fans uh, about this. Um, but at this point, with this team, it, it's 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 not a team, you know. It's going to take time, um, and, and, I, and I know the counter argument. Well, it's been already enough time. Well, we still have. It's really just been the last couple of years of assembling these young players. Keep in mind, in Scott Brooks' time here, it, it kind of it kind of changed because the John Wall injury, uh, and then all of a sudden they realized, well, we have to draft some some more players and younger players and, and, and go in, in different directions. So. I, I think ultimately, and Scott knows this, the coach will be judged on, on the wins and losses, and, and you cannot, without winning, without winning, any coach in any league does not keep his job. But I, I just don't think this is the time. And, and I think, you know, there was a, there was a hockey uh, team in Washington years ago in, in 2007. You know, we had Alex Ovechkin, who you may have probably heard of, And, but the team was struggling, and, and the coach actually went to the general manager and said, you know, I think I've lost the locker room. And the general manager said, no, give it some time. You know, we have a home stand coming up, a lot of home games. Let's see what happens. Well, they lost that first home game to a bad team badly. The next day, that coach, Glenn Hanlon, came into the, the office, and he knew that for whatever reason – Uh, well, he knew the reason that the players were just not responding to him anymore. I, I think this team is still wants to respond uh, to Scott Brooks. I, I think, you know, that certainly most recently that, that result against the Phoenix Suns is an example of that. But there has to be more games like the Phoenix Suns than like some of those losses to the Chicago Bulls earlier in the season. Well, uh, thank you, Dave. Um, last but not least uh, topic, we are going to deal with the NBA in general uh, quickly. Uh, first question, um, the Lakers have uh, LeBron and AD, the Bucks have Giannis, the Nets have uh, Kyrie, KD, and now uh, James Harden. The Clippers have Kawhi and PG. It's going probably to be uh, exciting playoffs. Um, in your opinion, 
which team is going to become champion this year. One of these four teams are an underdog to surprise us. Oh, man. Uh, and you know, uh, it's always the hardest question at this time of year to, uh, to, to answer that. And, uh, and also, uh, because I'm so focused on just what's been going on with the, with the Wizards, and sometimes I, I, I don't have time to, to step back and, and um, uh, globally look at it. I mean, I, I think, I, I don't think it's, it's going to be uh, the, the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, only because I do think it, it'll take longer for that to come together. But I, look, great players, and they are great players, figure out how to play together. It's like when Kevin Durant went to Golden State, everyone said, well, are they going to be able to – they did. Um, and again, an example of the health being such an important equation, the Warriors – didn't have Steph Curry last year, and they certainly missed not having Steph Curry. So it's a key to keep your key players um, on the floor. But in answer to your question, I, I think it's it's every reason to believe that, that it will be, you know, one of those – if I had to pick one team from the West, I, I think the Lakers are capable of, of doing it again because, look, LeBron is, is just – he, he's just on his own level, and he's, he's a champion and, and still showing signs of that. Um, if, if I had to from, pick from the East, um, I do believe this Milwaukee Bucks team is, is for real. Uh, and with Giannis, it's a, it's a special player. So I, I would think they would be the team you'd pick from the East. Thank you. Um, Doncic, Yanis, Jokic, Embiid, and many other players like... Uh, Ria Chimora or Denny Avdia, the international players are shining as they never did in the NBA. What is the reason of it, uh, in your opinion, Dave? I think it's because, because the game has changed in part. Uh, you, you could argue it's, it's a, you know, they call soccer the beautiful game or Pele called soccer the beautiful game. And in some ways, the NBA is not... Um, you know, a, a league of pounded down to the, the big center and, and, and not that you couldn't have a player from another country that, that was the big uh, uh, um, center that you pounded it down to, but it's not, it's not a, a, a big man dominated league anymore. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, you think about even a guy like Embiid who can certainly play in the post, he can go outside and, and shoot threes. I, I am old enough to remember when the thought of a guy 6'11 or 7 foot shooting threes, you'd think, boy, you, you must be drinking something more than soda. You know, you must be off your mind. And now it is just required that the big man can shoot the three. And, you know, guys, what's incredible is the, the three-pointer from the corner, from the corner, is considered the new layup. When I was growing up and you played basketball – a layup was considered a layup. Well, that corner three, that, that's supposed to be the easiest shot, so to speak. So I think in part because um, the game has become more perimeter-oriented, that, is, that has certainly helped. Um, you know, I, I know they've, um, they've, they've since changed it, but, you know, the way the international game used to be with the trapezoid for the lane, it was just – it was a – it was a different game. And, and so now it's, it's one game and it, it's a, I think a much more exciting brand uh, of basketball. And, and it is no accident when you look at the number of um, European players that are not only in the NBA, but having success, big time success. I mean, uh, you know, Luka Doncic is like, <laughs> you're like, wow, you know, uh, and you keep getting wowed by, uh, Denny Avdia, again, he just turned 20. I, I'm not saying he's going to be the next Luka Doncic or whatever. What I'm saying is we're talking a 20-year-old who, 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 who definitely has a feel for the game and making the right play and making the right pass, uh, and he's only 20. I mean, that, that's so exciting. Well, thank you for, for your answer. We have a, a last question, last but not least. It's a very serious one. Um, is Denny Avdia the best player in, in, the, in NBA history? <laughs> is, what, is, is Denny Avdia 
The best player yes. in NBA history? Yes. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. He's not the best player in NBA history. But but he's a very good player. And a very. I thought we'd lost something on the international connection there or something. But no, he's a very good player. And and he's going to be – he's going to have a very good uh, NBA NBA career. Well, thank you. Uh, the interview went quickly and it's already over. I wanted to thank you, Dave, um, on behalf of the Wizard France team for accept, accepting sorry, the invitation and for being so nice with us. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Et quant à nous, euh, chers fans français d'ici et d'ailleurs, euh, j'espère que ce moment passé avec Dave vous aura plu. On se revoit très, très vite euh, pour de nouveaux projets. Et puis, on vous souhaite euh, la, la bonne année. On vous présente nos meilleurs voeux. Salut l'équipe. Salut. Thank you. Thank you for your time and your passion. I appreciate it.